What's going on everybody? Welcome back to GMI's World and I'm very, very happy to announce that all of you guys that watch this video are going to be on your way to getting a free 89 overall uh, from EA Sports. Now pretty much what's going to happen is this. I'm going to give you guys the rundown of what I did because you don't have to 100% complete the gauntlet to get the pack, but if you want to get the stars to get more coins, uh, complete Mutt Master, things of that nature, and get the, um, there's one more collectible that you get out of the gauntlet pack. Um, like, I'll show it to you guys in a second, but pretty much these are the players that you can choose from. We're going to go over it right now, and then we're going to see, like, you know, gauge based on what you have on your squad, what would work best for you, all right? So all of these are free players that you get from just playing the solos. Keep in mind, there's no cost for contracts. You just got to be able to sit through it and get the stars, and you'll earn these players for free. I'm going to go over that in a second, especially some of you guys were asking about uh, specific solos within the gauntlet, how to complete it. Uh, we'll go over that in a second. I'll also show you everything that I did that I got the five stars through the first uh, segment, all right? So let's start with Leonard Fournette. Now, obviously, he comes in as a power back, okay? So if that's something that you're into, that's fine. Also, you can see right there, he has an 88 speed. Okay, similar to Marcus Allen. So, um, you know, you could add some stuff, uh, some things to him. Obviously, you can see right there that he's not a power-up yet. I believe that EA Sports says as they uh, develop, you'll have that option later to put them in a power-up. So remember, whichever one you choose, they're going to continue to get different versions and you can upgrade them going along the different gauntlets. And then ultimately, you'll be able to put them in a power-up later on. But um, most of you guys want to know what's happening now. And that's how I roll, bro. Like, I don't care about what's going on down the line. What are you doing right now? So let's take a look and try to figure out if he would work for you. The 88 speed is fine. The 86 Excel, fine, all right? Agility is a problem. Because what happens is when you're trying to maneuver in between tackles, this is the, it's certain things in Madden 20 that you have to give EA Sports credit for, and then it's certain things that make you rage. One of the things that I give them credit for is the movement. This has been a year when you can actually move the way your player, you know, you, you'll move your player the way you want him to move. You know what I'm saying? It's not like, all right, I pressed the button, he's doing an unnecessary hop step. Sometimes they still do it, but that's because you guys let off of the turbo button when you're actually moving. Remember, in this year, you don't really need to let go of turbo while you're moving side to side, which is realistic because depending on the agility, you should be able to get in and out of cuts without any situation or any kind of hassle. All right, so that agility is very, very low. I just want to point that out, that he may not be able to get in and out of cuts, like without any kind of uh, right stick movement, just moving with the left analog. He won't be able to move the same way as other pay other players with higher agility. All right, you see his catch is low. Carrying is 92, but we all know you're going to fumble no matter what if you get hit stick the right way. Elusive, he's under the 80 threshold. Truck is good. Okay, because for the most part, he's probably going to be able to put dudes like right out immediately. And realistically speaking, when you compare him to Bo Jackson, right? Bo Jackson is unique because of that agility. Not only that, he has that break tackle and you can see that his truck is an 88, but you see the elusiveness. That's why Bo Jackson is able to move the way he moves, whether, you know, whichever way you're trying to do it, whether you're using a move, uh, a special ball carry move or not, he's able to get in and out of tackles because he has that elusiveness and he has a decent agility. Also, I want to point out that Bo Jackson also additionally has decent spin move. So he's able to do spins even without abilities, even at an 82. Similar to Leonard Fournette, they'll both be able to spin the same way. You see what I'm saying? But you'll see that Leonard Fournette actually has a better stiff arm. So those are some of the things that when you look at both the cards, what are you going to get out of it? Remember, you can try all of these cards and then exchange them in the exchange set uh, for whatever, like unlimited times. You can continue to do it. So it's up to you how you want to do it. But you can see clearly that it's possible he might be able to do some things for you that you know, Bo Jackson couldn't, and you could go ahead and take your training back off of Bo and then move forward from Bo because we're not going to be adding any abilities to Bo anyway. So for me, it doesn't really matter. I just wanted to point that out. Even though he doesn't have the proper agility and things like that, he still has the same spin. So you would have to try it out and see if it works for you. That's the first guy. Juju Smith-Schuster, I, I, listen, Randy Moss was just released, so this guy won't be popular uh, for anybody that's going after anything. You can see that the deep route running, medium route, short route, very, very low. Spec catch, decent. Catch in traffic, decent. Catch, decent. Um, jumping, decent. Uh, speed, 87, not too good. Um, Donald Driver, more than likely, I'm probably going to rage sell him because I don't think I'm going to need him as a fourth receiver. It's possible. Maybe I will, but I don't know. I think I only need three receivers right now. So I got Deshaun Jackson. I got a lot of other cards that I really don't need to have right now that I can probably get rid of. So for me, 
If I'm starting a team and I have no receivers, he's decent. You know what I'm saying with his numbers. I, like, but based on the way my team is set up right now, I feel comfortable having the players that I have. Even though you can see in his core numbers, the catching traffic, the catch, those type of things, he's really up there with that. And that really matters because, I, I, listen, I had a guy play me with T.O. He was catching everything in traffic. So let me know in the comments if you've played against T.O. or if you have T.O. They let that dude catch almost everything with catching traffic. So those ratings definitely matter, just not for my team. All right. Uh, Ed Oliver Jr., this guy is useless uh, for, I, I, well, pretty much for like most teams other than his speed. Um, you can see right here. Look, this is the thing, right? For those of you guys that were asking me like, yo, why do I think he's useless? It's simply because like his power move is very, very low. Even though Linval Joseph has that like very, very low power move, his strength makes up for a lot of the stuff with that 93. Now, you could say and argue it's better right now with all these faster players to have a guy like Ed Oliver Jr. on your squad. But because of the fact that he doesn't have that strength and that value, I visibly see Linval Joseph put in work. Um, yeah, I could sell him. You know what I'm saying? Get some stuff for him because all the prices have raised up because of training. I could sell him and use the gauntlet player as a D tackle, but what am I really getting? Um, I would much rather have a guy like Alan Page or something like that that have, you know, the higher tier than to have a guy like this because it's still, it's higher than Linval, but it's still low tier and it's not really going to work for me with the way that I play my, uh, my defense. So he has that 78 that looks appealing and everything, but to be honest with you, I'd rather, uh, um, you know, a stronger, stout guy, you know, in the middle like that with Linval and just let him sit there until I get my Allen Page, which is ultimately what I want. But for Bill's steam team, he probably will be sick at the D tackle position because he's pretty close in speed to Allen Page. Allen Page just has those better power move, finesse move, things like that, that'll make it a lot better for your squad. Devin White, I really, really, if I didn't, if I didn't get Shazier, I would definitely have picked this guy up. Now you can see the difference in zone coverage, right? Um, Shazier obviously could go out there and do whatever, but this guy moving around at an 88 speed at middle linebacker, glitch. It's a glitch. Like it, it's, it, it's unbelievable. Like what is happening right now? Why is he that fast? That is ridiculous. That That's the speed of like Julio Jones. So you gotta understand that there's a lot of things that go into it and people need to really, really recognize what's necessary in the game as they go along because as you move forward in the game and you start to see the things that matter, it becomes very, very important for people to make the right decisions for the card. So just make sure you guys understand that, um, you know, going forward, that it's very, very necessary to be able to get the right card at the right time. And right now, because I have Ryan Shazier, it is very, very difficult for me to go and look at Devin White. Very, very difficult. Okay, so I I'm not even gonna, you know, it's like the more I look at it, I'm like, you know, I really don't want to, you know, I, it's making me want to get him and just add him as another middle linebacker and get rid of Patrick Willis. But again, the hit power at 89, right? When you look at Patrick Willis, these two guys are going to lay the wood, bro. Like, it's going to be really, really crazy. More than likely, I'm geared towards going after this guy because it's just that type of situation. So I want to make sure very, very clearly that you guys understand this is the guy that I'm leaning towards because I think he makes the biggest impact out of every one of the cards that are there. Okay. When you go to Derwin James, I'm a mutt master already. So when you look at it along those lines, it doesn't make any sense for me to go after Derwin James. You know what I'm saying? Like it just doesn't make any sense. Realistically speaking, it makes zero sense for me to do it because why, what, what am I doing? You know, I got, the, I got the best strong safety in the game already. Why would it make sense to go for Derwin? This is the situation with Derwin James. If you get yourself a Derwin James, what could happen is you could actually use him at the free safety position temporarily until Sean Taylor is released. And then he probably will put in enough decent work over there where it'll work out for you. Now, Ken Houston has decent zone coverage. Uh, so, you know, you could. Pr it doesn't really matter to me because that's who I put at the free safety position temporarily. So ultimately it doesn't really matter how you do it. You just have to be able to understand that this is the way that it works. As you continue to go on and you make these moves with these players, make sure you understand what's going on with it. You have to be able to understand exactly how this works. Um, pretty much everybody that uses these, car these cards, they, they're gonna have to make sure that you know, you understand that you have other players that you can put in those positions. So make sure looking at the card that you understand how you're going to utilize them before you actually get them. So those are your five choices. After you decide which one of these cards you want, 
you know, let me know in the comments, but I'm gonna show you guys now pretty much how, how I did it so fast. When you go to challenges, if you complete both tiers uh, initially and get five stars for both of the beginning, the rookie and the veteran, you only need a hundred to be able to get that pack. So I got the pack because I got the hundred out of the first two. When you complete the next two, you're gonna get another 81 overall player and a gauntlet expert token that I guess they're gonna use it for something else later on, all right, with the 25,000 also. So I think it's worth it to complete everything. I just wanted you guys to understand that you don't have to get everything, you only need 100. So as far as that token goes, because I know many of you guys are gonna be asking about that as well, as far as that goes, that's something that we're gonna be looking forward to be utilizing later on in Madden, not right now. So with everything that's being unloaded for us right now, when you look at the set, there's nothing there that's available for it, okay? So you all you have right now is the gauntlet player and the option to put something else in there to kind of get um, an exchange set to get any one of them over and over again. So what I would urge you guys to do is to make time to complete it. You don't have to rush to do it now because there's no need for the expert token right now, but just remember that it's there and that it has to be done. Also keep in mind that if you're completing the Mutt Master completely, which I am, I'm 99% complete, I need uh, 40 more to get 250K. You see what I'm saying? So it is worth it to get the stars. Uh, you know, for those of you guys that are wondering, why would you go back and do it? That would be a main reason that I would recommend for you guys to go ahead and do it, would be for you guys to go ahead and complete Mutt Master completely and get that 250K. So let me know which one of those five cards you really want, which one you're going after. Leave it in the comments. I'm going to see you guys and girls next time. You enjoy your night. One love, y'all.